Hurricanes. We've come a long way in prediction. We watch them develop as tropical storms off the coast of Africa. We study the swirling cloud pattern as it crosses the Atlantic and approaches the Caribbean. Often we can accurately pinpoint when a hurricane will strike land. It is more difficult, however, to know just where it will strike. Wherever this may be, the chances are great that several islands will be affected. And often, in smaller islands, a major hurricane will cause a nationwide disaster. How can smaller countries face the fury of hurricanes and other major disasters? I must say that um, I've never seen anything like this in my whole life. I've lost everything that I've got. And uh, I mean, it's island-wide. I mean, everything has been diminished completely. There's nothing left. Well, my hope is to God, right? I get my hand here, thought. I have no food, I have no clothing, and I have no shelter. The hurricane take everything, so I don't have nothing to do. They really take everything. I'm a farmer. I lost my property all the day on. So I'm in deep distress. No. Hurricane Hugo left behind a trail of destruction as it cut across the Caribbean. Guadeloupe, Montserrat, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, and into the U.S. coast. The damages were impressive. The main hospital in St. Kitts and Nevis suffered serious damage and was partially evacuated. Well, after the ravages of Hurricane Hugo, we experienced quite a lot of difficulties in the Ministry of Health. Particularly, there was damage to our general hospital, JNF Hospital at Springfield. And um, we have suffered there some $1.5 million worth of damage, mainly to the roof of the hospital, which was severely battered um, during the hurricane. Guadeloupe and the British Virgin Islands sustained heavy losses to agriculture and housing. Although Antigua and Dominica were spared the storm's full strength, health care facilities, housing and crops suffered greatly. The damage left by Hugo was comparable to other major hurricanes in the region. Gilbert in southeast Jamaica in 1988 David, which lashed the Dominican Republic and Dominica in 1979, Flora in 1963 in Haiti. To illustrate how major disasters affect small countries, let's use Montserrat, a small island of 12,000 people, as an example. Hurricane Hugo absolutely devastated Montserrat. Although only 10 deaths were directly attributed to the hurricane, this was truly a total disaster. Well, this hurricane was quite the most catastrophic that we've had in Montserrat. Montserrat is not an island which is normally visited by hurricanes. We haven't had a serious hurricane here for a generation. We tend not to take hurricanes seriously, but this one we could see was coming straight for us. When we got in the, down into the township itself, we began to see the order of damage that had been suffered. We are now able to assess that something like 99% of all the buildings received some form of damage. 20% of the homes were completely destroyed. Another 50% were severely damaged. The island's only hospital, the Glendon Hospital, lost its roof. 
In Montserrat, Hurricane Hugo was truly a countrywide disaster. In my estimation, about 90% or more Montserrat are homeless right now. Everybody house in Montserrat have some damage and severe damage. And uh, I've never seen nothing like this in my life. I've heard of hurricanes, but I've never heard, I've never seen anything like this. Compare this then to another major disaster, the devastating 1985 earthquake that struck Mexico, a large country with 65 million people. More than 10,000 people lost their lives that day. This was indeed a tragedy, but it did not affect the entire nation. The country was still able to mobilize a large pool of resources from unaffected areas. Montserrat's plight is not unusual in the Caribbean. The next major hurricane will severely affect some island nations. With the exception of Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica, the islands of the English-speaking Caribbean have a surface area that ranges from 85 to 2,000 square miles. Considering that a large hurricane extends over a 10,000 square mile area, small islands that lie in the direct path of a major hurricane are bound to sustain severe damages nationwide. And from the size of the hurricane, even if it didn't pass directly over us, we were going to get a pretty rough hit because the, 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 the northern um, parameters or the, the parameters of the hurricane was so wide and so large that it had to include Montreal at some point in time. What can the countries of the Caribbean do? Preventing damages should be the first priority. Prevention measures are those that lessen the physical impact of a disaster. Hurricane Hugo severely damaged the recently built Glendon Hospital in Montserrat. This is significant considering that it is the only state hospital. Fortunately, some areas of the hospital were more resistant than others. Today, prevention measures exist that can lessen the damage caused by hurricanes. The Caribbean Uniform Building Code, known as CUBIC, was produced and promoted under the leadership of the Caribbean community, CARICOM. This building code offers clear guidelines that will help to ensure that shelter and critical buildings, such as hospital, will resist hurricanes and other disasters. Patient areas should receive special attention, but equipment must not be neglected. In some countries, medical supplies were lost during Hurricane Hugo because storerooms were not hurricane resistant. We know that hurricanes will continue to cause serious damage and health problems in the coming years. And so prevention alone is not enough. National preparedness is also essential. Preparedness measures accept the inevitability of natural disasters, but they are designed to organize and facilitate a prompt and effective response. Maintaining a state of preparedness year after year is a challenge. It is not uncommon for island nations to experience long periods of calm between disasters. This dims the collective and institutional memory. Then, too, as certain islands are miraculously spared once again, people come to believe that this is due to the grace of God, who will certainly not let them down the next time. So why worry? Hope you wouldn't have this again in my lifetime. But if you come, what could we do? You pray, you pray, you pray. <laughs> Nothing doing. <laughs> Just wind and rain and gushing and all sounds coming in, wind and rain. There are no reasons to neglect preparedness. But these are real constraints that face emergency managers who must enlist the help of both politicians and the media to continuously remind the population of the region's vulnerability to disasters. Preparedness takes different forms. Disaster plans must be exercised periodically and the population must be continuously motivated especially in those countries that are least threatened. Preparedness is too serious a business to leave to disaster experts. That is the responsibility of the planning organization and every citizen. The availability of information to the public is a key requirement. It will enhance the capability of organizations and individuals to cope with emergencies, getting help when needed. 
communities, volunteer groups, women's associations, all key national resources must be involved. Regardless of how individually well prepared a small country may be, it may not be able to mobilize sufficient local resources to mount a comprehensive response. National self-reliance in the immediate aftermath of a disaster may be an elusive goal when the entire territory is devastated. For example, Montserrat did not need medical teams for emergency, life-saving medical care, but local health personnel did suffer substantial damages to their personal property and after a few days became totally exhausted by the problems they faced. So when I was on duty, even though the hospital roof was flying off and I was concerned about the patients, I was wondering what was happening at home, you know. It's really awful. What has been distressing is not being able to, the family are not only tired, but their houses have been blown away too, lost, and they've not been able to, they've not been able to, they've not been able to get away. So when the help comes, I just send them home and let them sort themselves out. Replacement personnel was needed for routine clinical duties. In large countries, this is available locally. But in a devastated nation such as Montserrat, replacement personnel had to come from neighboring countries. Inter-Caribbean solidarity is a must, an absolute necessity. It is also becoming a reality in the aftermath of Hurricanes Gilbert and Hugo. Caribbean agencies such as the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States and CARICOM, regional organizations like PAHO and the Pan-Caribbean Disaster Preparedness and Prevention Project, and local defense forces from various countries assumed a greater management role, mobilizing Caribbean staff and resources to respond to the challenge. We've got Bermudans coming in, we've already got the Bajans on the ground, the Jamaicans are coming, the Dominicans, St. Lucians and so on. And this, they know what Hurricane does, they know what we need, they're, they're getting what we want here fast. Uh, disciplined bodies of men with artisanal skills, the barges, the equipment and so forth. Fortunately, hurricane relief these days is, is a, a skill which agencies and governments have at their, at their elbow, as it were, and this is making life far more manageable for us. I think that uh, the importance of that cannot be um, overemphasized. Um, Jamaica Defense Force personnel in to assess the damage. Barbados has sent some persons. Um, Dominica has uh, sent some assistance. And other um, Caribbean countries are responding. Antigua has sent their Coast Guard down the ferry and supplies. So the, there's, there's been an excellent response from the Caribbean community. There's a tremendous outpouring of community spirit and cooperation and people willing to work together and get out there and get the job done. As a matter of fact, um, it's a little disturbing in a way. You're people coming into St. Kitts and Nevis today and looking around um, would not realize the tremendous amount of work that has been done since Sunday. And I tend to minimize the extent of the damage that was done, that has been done to our Federation. In the aftermath of Hugo, Caribbean agencies played a leading role in coordinating the multiple donor sources and the participation of so many regional relief teams. Although the coordination during Hurricanes Gilbert and Hugo was ad hoc, it laid the groundwork for the initial phase of a well-planned coordination mechanism for the entire region. The issues surrounding international assistance were particularly complex after Hurricane Hugo. Most large shipments of donations from governments, agencies, institutions or NGOs had to pass through Antigua before being forwarded to other affected islands. Yet Antigua had its own post-hurricane problems. This is sure to place an added burden on an inter-country mechanism to assist neighbors first, but it is not insurmountable. I believe we have had a good response from our CARICOM partners bearing in mind of course that several islands were hit i think that is one of the tragedy about this particular hurricane hugo it did touch quite a number of islands including antigua dominica saint lucia nevis uh, guadeloupe and puerto rico the u.s virgin islands i mean quite a number of islands were hit and i believe in a situation like this it would be difficult for one island to stretch its resources to help everyone. 
So I think that is one of the tragedies of Hurricane Hugo, the fact that it hit so many of the smaller islands. This particular hurricane also reinforced the image of Caribbean inter-island assistance. Aid arrived from all over the Caribbean. Even when they themselves were affected, neighboring countries provided useful aid. Quantity alone does not determine what is most useful. It is the appropriateness of the donations. And neighbors are in the best position to know the reality in a disaster-stricken country. The UN has declared the 1990s as the International Decade for Natural Disaster Reduction. The International Decade is a time for increasing the awareness of individuals, the community and politicians about the ever-present risk of natural hazards. No single measure by itself is enough to reduce the impact of disasters on the Caribbean. Well, the first thing I would say is never ever underestimate the extent of the power of a hurricane. A balanced combination of prevention measures, national preparedness, particularly in the health sector, and an inter-Caribbean response mechanism to integrate and coordinate the international response will give the best chance. An inter-Caribbean response mechanism would be a model for other regions to follow. The decision to implement this clearly belongs to the countries. Can they afford not to?